Hello class, for this week's assignment we are to do an informative speech. I have chosen to make my informative speech on what is an arcade stick. If you remember from my week one assignment video, I'm a tech geek. I play always my Sony PlayStation 4 when I'm not at work or doing any schoolwork. I grew up playing in the arcades at my local pizza shop. Started with Pac-Man and then eventually worked its way into fighting games. When you're playing on an arcade, you actually play with what is in front of you now. This is the top portion of the arcade. It's an arcade stick. When people play games now, console versions, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or even on the PC, they normally associate playing the games with this, a control pad or a game pad. In order to go ahead and to let you know what an arcade stick does for you or does for a person when they're playing a fighting game, I need to go ahead and describe it to you. This here standing uh, standing here is the Hori Rap Real Arcade, it stands for Real Arcade Pro version 4. If you need any further assistance with that, there is a link that I will provide to you at the bottom underneath the link for this video for you, that it will be for YouTube, and that link is the Hori website which has a reference guide there that you can use to check, check my video and what I'm telling you or as well so that you can get further information. Going ahead and describing it to you. In the back compartment to stow away for transport or, or to move and, and stow away your 3.8 meter or 9 foot cable very good so that you don't have to blur your eyes and you can go ahead and use it from your sofa as well as there's another purpose for being wired most controllers now are wireless the reason for it being wired is when you hit a button on the wireless controller it will take maybe a few milliseconds to register on the screen that's pretty bad when you're playing a fighting game you want to be as quick as possible when you hit the button because it's wired it'll happen much much sooner Right next to the compartment where you store your cable is a digital touchpad. Left click, right click, middle click, holding it down and sliding it provides you with different options that you can choose for your character to set reset him so that you can continue to practice your combinations for your video game that you are practicing. Moving on, the actual body of the arcade stick is made out of plastic. It sounds very hollow, well that's because it is inside is only a motherboard. The motherboard is rated as an average tier type of arcade stick. With this, there are faster ones, there are more better ones available on the market, but this one is rated as average. You can find ratings for other motherboards of arcade sticks, and I'll provide this link as well below for Tasia at Tasia.net. Again, the link will be below. The joystick's two main components start off with the actual joystick itself and the joystick itself has two main parts the bottom part which is a um, restrictor gate the restrictor gate that's on this one is called a square gate basically in the shape of a square you can also change it out and go with this which is an optical gate the optical gate provides you with more leniency for your inputs this one the square gate provides more precise inputs harder to master but better throughout time. The top part is a ball top or where you hold the joystick. I use the ball top. Why? Because ball tops are used predominantly by people that grew up playing in the United States or playing on Street Fighter. There is also a version of this joystick that can be used with a Batman and obviously it looks like a bat. Those are for people that grew up in Korea or started playing video games known as Tekken or Mortal Kombat. That is a choice of preference nowadays, but most likely you'll see a lot of ball tops. Moving over to the left, you have your eight 30 millimeter buttons. They sound loud. You're going to wake a lot of people up. Trust me. They have silencers and different types of buttons and colors and everything so that you can spice up the joystick and make it your own. Me, I just like to stick with basic. These buttons can all be differently mapped to uh, provide you with different other capabilities based on your games, i.e. for Street Fighter, your bottom four will be kick buttons, your, bot your top four will be punch buttons, 
let's say you play a game like Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear only uses five buttons. So you're only using either your bottom three and two on top or vice versa. You can map them any way. Mapping them is just basically programming. If you would like to see a video of different buttons, different layouts, or even how someone actually goes ahead and purses the buttons, you can go ahead to the link below that I'll also provide, which is to a video of the most prominent and best Street Fighter player of all time. His name is Daigo Yumahara, and he has a different joystick altogether, but he has colors on them. And you can also see for 45 seconds, basically how he goes ahead and he presses them. It's almost like he's playing the piano. Moving over, you have your options button. This is a smaller 24 millimeter version button. Same style as the Hori Hayabusa's that are here, but it is six millimeters smaller because it wants to distinguish themselves as a button that is not playable. It will only bring you up the option screen on your game. And therefore you can choose whatever options you need to choose at the time to go ahead and continue playing your game. Moving over, you can't really see because of the light on the camera, but I will go ahead and explain to you that there are certain other buttons here. Of them is one for the Sony PlayStation button, which you can see very lightly because it's a clear button over here. Basically, that is another options button, but this options button doesn't bring you the option screen in the game. It brings you the option screen on the actual PlayStation. So basically, you come out of the game and now you're dealing with the actual CPU, if you will, of the uh, PlayStation. You have various other buttons that you can go ahead and map or again reprogram you can take a button that's here and instead of pressing it here you can go ahead and press it over here on the side if that happens you have little lights that'll pop up over here you also have toggle switches over here on this side that'll allow you to choose your arcade stick to either be compatible with a playstation 3 playstation 4 or a pc the last button over here that you need to know about is your button that allows you to go ahead and share your video game playing with either stretch streaming services as YouTube or Twitch. Last but not least, the bottom part. Grippy, on slip, so while it's sitting on your lap, it doesn't move while you're playing. As you tend to kind of move around and kind of see how it just shakes and everything, so you want to have it stable so you don't miss out your inputs. And you've got a nice little handle where if you need to transport it, you can just carry it on the go and go, like if you're carrying a briefcase, kind of like somebody going to work. That's the real Arcade Pro 4 fight stick. If you would like to see on how to use an actual arcade stick, you can. there is another link that I am providing you guys at the bottom. It is one for a cross-counter TV training uh, YouTube video done by a gentleman named Gutex who will show you how to hold the joystick, how to press the buttons, um, and a different variations of that as well. That's my video for this week. I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing everyone in next week's videos.